Hi, this is Philip Ador, founder of NCLEX RN 45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about perimenopausal or menopausal syndromes. Menopause is defined as amenorrhea, occurring more than 12 months. Amenorrhea means the absence of menstruations. Another biochemical side is a decrease in estrogen, which relates to a depletion of follicles in the ovaries. It is important to look at the changes of the estrogen levels throughout the female life cycles to see how menopause occurs. So here is a graph of the estrogen concentrations on the y-axis and the age on the x-axis. So 10 years, 20, 30, 40, 50 years during puberty, estrogen region concentration increases. This is when the adolescents develop secondary sex characteristics and then during adolescence, they begin having their menstrual cycle. And during the menstrual cycle, the estrogen concentrations fluctuates, but it still remains relatively high. Now, during pregnancy, estrogen levels rises. This is in order to prepare the female for perpersion and the breastfeeding. Then again, there is a normal menstrual cycles with estrogen regions concentrations fluctuating till about 40 years old. When women attempt to hit the menopause, now, menopause usually occurs between mid to late 40s and lasts for about 4 years. In early menopause, the estrogen concentrations are relatively stable. However, towards the end of the menopause, you have a drop of the estrogen concentrations. So after 4 years of menopause, you have post-menopause where estrogen concentrations are very low and there is no more menstruations, no more menstrual cycles, so-called amenorrhea. And we will have a look at why there is no menstruations in menopause and why there is low estrogen. So we can say that before menopause, when the estrogen levels are arising and relatively stable, this is the pre-menopause stage. So let's have a closer look at the two stages of the menopause, the early stage and the late stage of menopause. Now hopefully this won't sound too confusing but in early menopause, as I mentioned, and because there is a normal estrogen levels, there is a normal SH levels, another important hormone that is responsible for actually stimulating estrogen production. However, in late menopause, you have a decrease in estrogen levels. And because you have a decrease in estrogen, you have an increase in FSH, and that is because the FSH wants to try to produce or wants to try to stimulate more estrogen production. So I hope that was not too confusing. Let us look at these hormones in a bit more detail and how they are related. So there is the hypothalamus and the important endocrine tissue in the brain. And below is the pituitary gland and the other important endocrine tissue made up of anterior and posterior lobes. During the female's new cycle for menstruations, so just after a woman experienced her period, the hypothalamus produces a hormone called GnRH, which stimulates the anterior pituitary to produce and release follicle-stimulating hormones, or FSH. Now, FSH, or follicle-stimulating hormones, travels to the ovaries, which are the female gonads, the tissues that makes the female eggs. What follicle-stimulating hormones aim to do is to stimulate the maturations of the follicles of the primordial follicles in the ovaries here. In the ovaries, you have the thousands of heaps of primordial follicles. Ready to mature, these primordial follicles have stimulating hormones receptors. They have the FSH receptors. And so when FSH is being produced, some of these follicles are being mature and they begin producing estrogen. So we can say that the FSH role is for follicle maturation as well as estrogen productions indirectly. However, only one follicle woman show faster than the rest. This is because it has most FSH receptors or has a higher affinity for FSH and it is more follicle that will ovulate and release the egg. When ovulation occurs, when the follicle releases the eggs, no more follicle matures and the follicles that ovulates becomes the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is essentially a dead follicle that will degenerate, but also as it degenerates, it will secrete estrogen. Okay, so that was the normal menstrual cycle that occurs each month and there's an ovulation each month. There's a corpus luteum that degenerates each month. 
Now, an important concept to understand that, that relates the estrogen to follicle stimulating hormone is that when you haven't have an increase in estrogen region, when you have a high concentration of estrogen in the blood, they will inhibit the release of follicle stimulating hormones. Because you already have a high amount of estrogen, however, if you have a low amount of estrogens, this will actually trigger the release of follicle stimulating hormones because you want more estrogen to be produced. So now, let's see how all this relates to menopause. So what happens is when a woman hits the menopause, this is where there ex there's an exhaustion of the follicles when the follicles are depleted. When there's a little or no follicles left. However, in early menopause, there is still some follicles maturing and so you do not get estrogens and estrogen concentrations are still, are still there. However, if this happens each month, after each month and there's less and less follicles maturing, you have less and less estrogen being produced. So when you have a less and less estrogen being produced, this will actually stimulate the release of the FSH. And because it will stimulate the release of more FSH, this will desensitize the follicle to FSH. So as a result, if there's so much FSH, it will not work on the follicle, and so you actually have no ovulation occurring. And this is where the menopause occurs. Basically, when you slow down the follicles, it just stops the maturing, and they stop the estrogen concentrations just drops. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So factors that he can hasten the onset of menopause include smoking, because smoking undergoes menopause. Two years earlier than the non-smokers. Let us now look at some symptoms of the menopause. So in some neurological signs and symptoms include depressions, anxiety, memory loss, mood changes, and headaches. Menopause also triggers hot flashes, which experiences a sudden feeling of warmth in the face and neck and the chest area for about 4 minutes. And this can trigger night sweats. Other symptoms include pain and weight gain. Urological symptoms include urgency, frequency, dysuria, and incontinence. Vaginal symptoms and signs include dryness, which deep increases in chances of getting the female of getting urinary tract infections, as well as other infections. There is also discomfort and itching, dysphoreunia, area and vaginal atrophy. So there's no prevention for menopause. It is a normal physiological process that occurs in females. But the treatments are available to help with the symptoms, and this includes hormonal therapy, administrations of estrogens. Others, you can also administer gabapentin, as well as the moisturizers and topical hormones to treat the vaginal symptoms.